technology yes once again welcome to our first generation part one blazing your own trail by william peace university once again i'm ansley hicks and i am an admissions counselor here and i have another one of my admissions counselors here his name is david hi welcome everybody so glad everybody's here um yeah as, as ansley said my name is david i am the newest admissions counselor at william peace university and i'm glad to be able to talk to you guys today So oh, once again, welcome. So a little bit of quick notes. I know you guys probably are super zoomed out, but you kind of just want to throw these notes in there. So we are in a meeting feature, so we can see and hear you. So please mute yourselves um, and please utilize our chat box. Um, just uh, let us ask any questions or if you want to just shout us out, please um, utilize that. Um, so what are we going to discuss today? Are we going to discuss who is a generation first generation college student? Um, some college facts, as well as how to search and what you should consider in your search. And we're also going to have a guest speaker, Maya Bryant. She is from the class of 2017 at William Peace University. Then we're going to have a quick little Q&A. And I'm going to turn it over to David. And you'll be able to. Yeah, so um, our main focus today is first generation students. Uh, we, we believe that this is uh, trickier uh, position to be in when you come in. So first, we want to define what a first generation student as a first generation student is somebody whose parents do not have a four year college degree. So if your parents just finished high school or, um, or just have an associates, you are still a first generation degree. Um, ironically, in, in some ways, I'm personally a first generation student myself, because my parents did not go to, uh, to college in the United States. They went to college in another country. So definitely the process was very different. When I went to college in the United States, I had to learn all these things. So know that we come from a place of uh, understanding and empathy and we wanna help you. We wanna walk with you and we wanna get to know you. So um, we're here for you. Feel free to interrupt if you wanna ask any questions or feel free to put your questions uh, on the chat. I will be glad to answer uh, as many or as many as we can. And if we don't get to any, we'll definitely give your information. We can email about it. Uh, so first generation students, if you can keep, go to the next slide, um, that'll be great. So what are some of the um, challenges that first generation students face? And this is, I know many people struggle with these things, but this is especially true about first generation students. Um, First is balancing school work and extracurriculars. Com coming from high school into college, it's something that not everybody knows how to do. And if, if, you, if you don't know, if you have questions about how to handle this, feel free to reach out because everybody's different. So we do not, we can't, I cannot say, here's the solution on how to balance school work and extracurriculars because even as an adult now, um, there's times I don't know how to do it, if I can be honest. So if you need help, call us, talk to us. We'll be glad to, to walk with you through your situation and give you uh, the best uh, advice possible that we can. Um, also, as a first generation student, no one in your family has ever um, navigated through college and through applying for colleges and through applying uh, through scholarships. And this is what this um, webinars are about. This is the first part out of three. So let me encourage you by the end of today, uh, you wanna sign up for that second one and invite your parents to come with you invite um, anybody that is helping you through the college process, uh, invite them to join because it's gonna be useful information. Um, and staying connected to home, uh, especially in today, when some students are remote, some students are on campus, it can be tricky how to handle those divisions. So talk to us, we wanna help you again. And um, we, hopefully we can figure things out together. So some college facts, uh, there, as, many as, uh, as many of you know, there's two-year colleges and four-year four colleges and universities. And some examples of two-year colleges in our area are Wake Tech, uh, some in Johnson County is Johnson Community College or Cleveland Community College. Um, and they're, they're wonderful. We work with them. We, I don't wanna sound like I'm knocking them down. Obviously, I'm a little biased because I, I, I am part of William Peace University, but, um, but they're, they're Normally, community colleges or two-year colleges 
uh, tend to be to either get a two-year degree or to get technical education. And that's fine if that's your goal. Uh, but the benefit, uh, the benefit of that is that you can actually transfer into a four-year university. Um, and these are where we offer, we offer oh, and so um, community colleges tend to offer associate's degrees. Four-year universities uh, uh, offer bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degrees. And it obviously depends on how long you want to be in school and what your end goal is. But um, I am, I'm a fan of four-year universities and a bachelor's degree. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, there's also private schools and public schools. Uh, private colleges are primarily, um, is primarily supported by the school's endowment fund or stu student tuitions. So it's a school that is kind of ran runs on his own. Public schools are colleges and universities funded by the government. Uh, some examples of public uh, schools are NC State, uh, UNC, uh, UNC, and some examples of private ones are Meredith or uh, William Peace University. We're private, um, there's benefits and there's um, cons, if you can call it that, for each one. So, and it really comes down to what kind of experience you wanna have. It, it comes down to what your goal is and what you want to experience during your, during your college experience. Uh, there's also in-state and out-of-state um, schools. Uh, out-of-state uh, are schools that are not where you're living. So if you were to move to, if you live in North Carolina, you were to move to Ohio, you would be considered an out-of-state student for some time. But uh, in-state schools are schools that are part of your backyard, you know, for example, if you live in North Carolina, we are part of your in-state schools. Um, out-of-state schools have out-of-state and in-state tuition. Meanwhile, uh, private universities have a flat rate for everybody. So this that's one of the advantages of William Peace. We don't have the difference between out-of-state and in-state colleges. Um, so that's one of the benefits to come to William Peace. So now we're going to take a look at, after we got all those college facts, we're now going to take a look at a four-year private and public, some of the differences. Um, of course, as David mentioned, William Peace University is a private university. Um, so some of the differences between that you may see here um, at Peace, um, between a public and a private is definitely tuition, as he mentioned. Um, we are a flat rate, so we do not charge for out of state, um, as well as class sizes. We have a 12 to one student teacher ratio. So that gives you an idea on um, how many students are in class, as well as doing this whole COVID thing. It did not take a too much of a wiggle room to um, just accommodate students with classes, as well as opportunities. Um, coming to a private university has so many opportunities, such as internships and just easier ways to be involved um, on campus as well as off campus as well. So how to search. We gave you all this information about colleges, so now we're going to uh, help you how to search. Um, number one, Google is everyone's friend. Um, so this is a good way to do a broad search and also for some with us, we um, are part of Raise Me, which is a scholarship. Um, it's a great resource for for students to earn scholarships from ninth to 12th grade. I think 12th grade is probably already have, um, the deadline has already met, but between ninth and 11th grade, um, you are still able to go in and log in to um, just log some, your classes, you get scholarships based off your classes, your A, your grades and your classes, as well as your um, community service efforts. And then also we're gonna mention Niche, which is an awesome pl platform where you can research colleges yourself. So it has all kind of information, as well if you put your information in into niche, um, it will contact the college for you. So it'll kind of do the work for you so we can kind of know who you are. Um, second is virtual college fairs. Um, since college, we're not able to meet you in person. Typically, we would have been able to go to your school, speak with you, um, give you some information um, physically. But of course, now we're not able to do that. So many schools are doing um, college fairs and many organizations are doing virtual college fairs. So those are, um, 
a great resource as well. Um, your high school counselors. Um, we work very closely with high school counselors and they know who you are. They've been working with you for four years. So they know who you are and what you're looking for. Um, and they know us, so they will, and they know all about the university. So please reach out to them. They are there to help. Um, we have spoken with counselors and they're, they're waiting to help you guys um, with your college search. So please reach out to them. And lastly, but not least, but definitely virtual campus tours are in person. When you push university, we have virtual and in-person tours currently, of course, with COVID precautions. Um, so that is a great way to just kind of learn more about the college, step foot on the campus to see what it looks like, what it's all about, where you're located. Um, so um, please utilize all these ways to search for a college. Um, and what you should consider in your search. Do you want a city or a town? Do you want to be in a metropolitan area or do you want to be in a town? That is definitely something you should reconsider about where you'll be because you'll be there for four years. So you need to actually love where you are. Um, one of the things that I remember when I went to college that I needed to know was um, our cars allowed. Um, William Peach University, we do allow our first years to have cars, but many schools do not. So that is something that you want to, I um, mean, other things that you want to kind of look into to see what you're able to bring and what you're not able to bring, um, especially if you want to have a, a job or you want to be able to, to leave campus when, when you need to. Um, also look at, um, this is very important, your school size. The um, small size, mid-size, or large size schools is definitely something that you should consider in your search. Um, small is typically way pieces considered as a small university, but mid-size and large, that is definitely something you want to consider. Um, it is very important if you have a, a large school heart and you're at a small school, it won't work. Um, and last but not least, definitely um, your majors. Um, majors are highly important. Um, every school has their own special major um, that we love to highlight um, and um, just knowing what you want to major in and just researching the schools that have those particular majors can kind of narrow down your search as well. So this part is for parents. Um, you can do something to get involved. I know this is um, a new territory for you, but this is a journey for you as well. So please, please get involved. Um, one of the ways you can get involved is just to know important dates and deadlines for your student and you as well, just so you can just kind of help them along with the process. So next steps, after we've told you all this information about colleges and how to search and what to consider, um, your next steps should be to complete and submit your application. Um, William Peace um, Fall 2021 applications are open now. We are on rolling admissions. So that means we do not have a hard deadline, but we love the sooner the better. Um, deadlines, please pay attention to deadlines for as for scholarship applications and such as important documents that are needed. Um, please pay attention to those deadlines. Um, a lot of them are coming up really, really soon. Um, and last but not least, please submit your FAFSA. That is how you are eligible um, for financial aid. Um, it opened October 1st. So again, the sooner the better. Um, you're able to enter up to 10 schools. Um, and WPU's FAFSA code is located there, um, 002953. So we're not going to- Hey, Ansley. Huh? Just quick question. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a question in the chat, and I think it will be- a Interesting if you if you answered it. Uh, what the question is? What size school is William Peace considered? Okay, so yes, awesome, great question. So we are considered as a small size school. Um, small size ranges up from probably eight hundred to a thousand students. So William Peace is definitely considered a small size school. Yes, so now we're going to switch gears, um, and we're going to speak with our special guest. Um, Miss Maya Bryant, go ahead and ask the stage. And thank you for joining us, Maya. Um, just go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll get to the questions. All right, well, thanks for having me, Ansley and David. Uh, my name is Maya Bryant, like Ansley said, and I am a proud member of the class of 2017. I majored in communication and minored in theater during my time at Peace. I'm also from Durham, North Carolina, so didn't travel too far to go to Peace, and I'll probably get into why later. So, <laughs> Great, so first question, um, how did you decide to go to college? Yeah, so, 
even though neither of my parents um, graduated from a four-year university, it was always something that I always told people it was expected of me. So I knew that education was very important from a very early age. It was the one thing that no one could take away from me. And so my family, you know, made sure that I had the resources to um, be able to attend college if that's what I wanted to do. And so junior year of high school is when I got really serious about looking for schools. And I knew I wanted to be close to home. Um, I knew that because no one else in my family had really experienced um, going to a four-year university, like you all were mentioning before, that I wanted a small atmosphere. But I also wanted the opportunities that a big, bigger city would afford me. And so when I visited Peace for the first time, it checked all of those boxes. And so that is, that's what led me to William Peace University. Okay, so that's actually I, the, know, I think I answered. <laughs> yep. So it's going to be what led you to attend WPU. Yeah, and I mean, if I'll expand on that a little bit more, it was I tell this story very often that um, I attended an open house at Peace, and I remember standing in front of our famous fountain, and it's still a very special place in my heart when I stand in front of that fountain, and my mom. Um, very organized woman, <laughs> had all of these papers and was trying to figure out everything. And she turned around to me and she said, so what do you think? And I said, this is home. And I really, um, I stand by that till this day, that peace is my home. Um, I had people who had my back and I knew that once I left home and I didn't have my mom there to stay on top of me, I had professors that were going to do that. I have so many stories from, I mean, one time I was sick, very, very sick. Um, and I had a professor call me It's because I was not in class and asked me where I was. And as soon as he heard me, he then said, okay, now you need to go to the nurse. So people took care of me. They made sure that I was successful. And I accredit my post-peace academic success to the time that I had at peace. I'm currently working on my third degree at 25 years old. And I wouldn't have imagined I would be able to do that without the support um, and the foundation that was led for me at peace. Okay, so that's going to piggyback into the next question. Um, can you describe your time at WPU? I know you have so much. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I, one of the things that stuck out to me earlier um, when you all were talking was get involved. Uh, it was so easy for me. I was very involved in high school and it was so easy for me to jump into that same um, habit when I was at peace. I was a part of student government. I was an orientation leader. I was a peer mentor. I was a peer tutor, uh, you name it. And so it was so easy for me to get involved. And I think that also helped um, with the mentors that were provided to me, with the people who were making sure that I was the best that I could be all four years at peace. Uh, so that my time at peace was very, um, I don't, sometimes it's indescribable. I miss it every single day, but it really laid the foundation for um, set up for life. Uh, I think this is a cool story now too. I just looked on my Facebook memories. I don't know if people still do that, but five years ago, I was raving about this amazing internship that I had completed or was in the midst of during um, the internship program. Everyone at Peace is required to do an internship. And I was interning in the marketing department at North Carolina Theater. Um, and Two months ago, I received a call from the CEO of North Carolina Theater offering me a job in the midst of a pandemic that they had created specifically for me. That is unheard of. Um, that 25 years old, someone's calling me, offering me a job that they had created for me. And that I attest that to, again, the internship program at Pease, the way that I was set up for success during my time at WPU. Awesome. And what was your major while you were here? Communication major, theater minor. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you have given yourself during the college process? So kind of think back to when you were 17 and 18, thinking about, you knew that you wanted to go to peace, you knew that this was home, but what kind of advice would you have given yourself? Yeah, well, um, I, I, I don't know. I think that my knowing what I wanted was very important um, in the college process. So knowing that I wanted to be close to home, so I think making a list of what you want is very important. So I wanted to be close to home. I wanted a small environment. One thing I loved about peace, um, and even when I was able to teach a first year seminar class last semester, you know, the classes are so small. Uh, that's something I will never take for granted. So whether we were on a Zoom call or in person for most of the semester, it was 
it was so intimate and small. So make a list of what you want and um, weighing the pros and cons. I think it's also important to use your resources while you're applying for college. So the admissions office is always there to help. The financial aid office is always there to answer questions. So don't be afraid to ask questions because someone is always willing to help you at Pease. Um, and I saw that when I became that person as a part-time professor, where if I didn't know the answer, I was going to go find the answer for a student. And that is um, every faculty faculty and staff member at Peace. If they don't know the answer, they're going to find it for you. Yes, that is definitely true. Um, so now we're going to, thank you, Maya, so much. That is great. Um, love to hear stories of alums. Um, so now we're just going to open up the, the floor for any questions that you may have um, for either myself, David, or Maya. Um, please throw it down in the chat or you can just unmute yourself. Um, just kind of throw the questions at us. I actually have a question for Maya and I hate to be the first one, but I'll break the ice, no problem. Um, so I, I see that you have had incredible experience, had an incredible experience of peace. Uh, you said, know what you want, but obviously a lot of us, including myself, we don't know what we want. What is some advice on how to, how to land those things, how to make those decisions or how to like, okay, figure out what, what the trial and error process, I guess, if you could call it that, that you followed to figure out. Yeah, that's a good question. And I think it's so funny for me to say, know what you want, because I am the world's most indecisive human being. The only thing I'm sure about is that I want French fries and sweet tea every day. Other than that, I'm not really sure about many things. But, and this sounds so, so cliche, but I, I feel comfortable saying it because I'm not the only one I've heard say it. There is something special about Pieces Campus if it's the right fit for you. Um, and I would say, obviously, we are in strange, strange times, but if you are able to visit campuses in person um, and to get that firsthand experience, please do it. Please do it safely. But um, that was what sealed the deal for me and knowing what I want when I was able to walk into that classroom, when I was able to walk um, the campus and look out into downtown Raleigh, there was this feeling, this sense of home. Uh, for me. And I always use that word, but it truly felt like that was where I was supposed to be. Um, so I think don't be afraid of trial and error. Visit places, um, ask those questions, and then you, that's how you'll figure out what you want. Like I said, I had, you know, really important things. You know, being close to home was very important to me. My family is very, um, very close to them, and they're very important to me. So I knew that I didn't want to be next door to them, but I wanted to be <laughs> you know, close enough to get to them. But I also wanted that small atmosphere and those opportunities that obviously um, I was able to take advantage of while I was at peace. Um, yes, so we, yes, we have a question. Um, what kind of clubs were you involved with involved when we were here at peace? Yeah, so um, I was involved in student government. So I was the traditions coordinator. So something really cool at peace are our traditions. The school has been around for a long time. And as it's evolved, we've kept these really cool traditions. So I was able to plan school dances, plan dinners that um, paid homage to our past and paved the way for our future. So that was one of my most memorable moments. Um, I was an orientation leader, so I was able to welcome students to peace. That was probably one of my favorite things to do during the summer. I did that twice uh, and best experience ever with my peers and being able to meet new students to come into peace. Uh, I was a peer mentor, so I was able to assist and teach the first year seminar class twice. Um, I was also a part of our drama club, so we called it 15 East Peace. I don't know if, if you're a theater person, you understand that um, it was called 15 Below. Um, so there's a famous uh, theater in New York called 54 Below because it's on 54th Street. So um, we wrote plays, we performed shows, um, anything I could get my hands on, I was, I was in it. And I will say that that is a, there's a fine line between being over involved um, because making sure that obviously the purpose of being at peace is to make good grades and to graduate. So making sure that you um, are keeping that balance. And sometimes and that was not always easy for me. Who is my favorite professor and why? Ooh, uh, it's gonna get me in trouble. No, <laughs> so many, okay. 
Roger Christman, hands down. Uh, he was my communications professor and I had many of my classes with him. And that was because he was so hard on me. And honestly, to this day, he's still very hard on me. Um, I, that's something I loved at Peace, that they, all the professors took their job very serious, but they didn't just care about if I made an A in their class. They cared about if I was a good person, if I you know, took those morals and ethics that I learned in those classes with me into my career. Uh, and so that he would have to be my favorite professor just because he never let me settle for anything less than my best. Um, he knew if I was slacking off and he didn't accept it. And there was another one. Um, what kind of traditions does peace have? Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, there are two, and please, Ansley, jump in if I'm wrong, if I'm naming things that don't happen anymore and people are gonna look forward to them. So there are two, and these obviously probably are gonna look different for the next year. Mm -hmm. We're hoping we can get back to some sense of normalcy, but there are two dances that happen. Um, fall cocktail and red rose ball. So one happens in the fall, one happens in the spring. Uh, traditions dinner is my favorite tradition at Peace. So long, long time ago, uh, the students at Peace would eat in um, the main building and they would eat family style. So you had to wait until your table was filled and then you passed food around to the table. So we do that um, in the fall. So typically students dress up and go to the dining hall and um, eat a traditional family style dinner. The food is always amazing. That's probably why it's my favorite tradition. Um, la last day of class is yeah, a fun that. tradition, which that actually started after my time as a student at Peace. Um, but that's a fun tradition where literally on main lawn, it's Chuck E. Cheese, I'm showing my age. Um, but it's kind of, uh, they're fun and games um, to celebrate the last day of class. That, that's pretty much all of the ones that I can think of um, that are like the fan favorites. Definitely Red Rose, um, Fall Cartel, and L Doc is definitely one of the fan favorites. Love those. Yeah. I think it's worth mentioning that as I, I as Maya said, like even though right now we may not be able to do many things like that, our our goal is really to give every student the best experience they have. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know we are, we are still trying to figure out how to have fun, how to have events, how to have relationships with the professor. Um, you know the, the classes are small enough where they can socially be distanced, and so don't. I wouldn't worry as much that all oh, my college experience is going to be ruined because of how the world is. No, we will figure out ways and yep. we are figuring out ways. Yeah. And to piggyback off of that, um, if I haven't talked too much already, uh, like I mentioned, I did um, teach, I was a part-time professor last semester. So this was when we were figuring out what was happening in the world. So it was a very interesting time for both myself and my students that I had in my class. But one thing that I loved was we were all in this together. <laughs> like every day we walked in the class, we knew that we were in it together. We knew that the choices we made impacted those around us. And that's when I talk about, you know, feeling like home, like feeling like it's a family. We, we knew that we were in it together and we had to face that together. So I also love that we were able to be in person um, and be safe about it. No, not once did I feel like we were being unsafe. And so that put a lot of, um, my nerves at ease with everything that was going on. Yes, um, I definitely will, will say that. That say um, something that we are here. Students are in class. Um, our class in classes. I'm seeing them walking through right now. Um, so yes, our students are in class, and that's one of the cool things about being a small institution is that you can accommodate in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> very yeah. easily. So um, yes, that is something that we're all in this together. There are signs like, you know, around here, let us know like wear your mask and make sure you wash your hands. So um, that is something that we always um, stress for our students and staff. Yeah. Yeah, I was very, I'm gonna stop talking after this, but I was very impressed <laughs> with our students last semester because very rarely did we have to remind students to put on their mask and it was fairly new um and even if you did have to like just remind someone to put it up they were like oh i'm so like they were so apologetic and i'm like this is weird we get it just pull up your mask where i mean you see on the news other schools are not as successful and so i think that's something peace should definitely pat themselves on the back for yeah 
That's a good question, Abby. <laughs> you have a roommate, and if so, how did you two get along? Yeah, so I want to touch on the roommate process very briefly. I have not, I was never employed by Residence Life, so, <laughs> uh, but I did love that um, usually a lot of people meet their roommate at orientation, and so I stress how important it is to go to orientation to meet people. Um, that's just important, and so I did meet my roommate at orientation. She actually lived that weekend we were there like two doors down from me um, and we got along really well we were very different I this was also interesting so I no one in my you know my immediate family had gone to college and so I had to adjust to sharing a room I had never done that before so if you are the only girl in your family like I am like my brother and I never shared anything or you were the only child I stress 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 to go into college with an open mind um that's just all I can say. Uh, I am very good friends with my sophomore and junior roommates. So there were, um, I lived with two other uh, women those years and we are best friends. We you know, are used to getting dinner every month. Obviously that slowed down through the pandemic, but we, I was in one of her wedding, uh, one of my friend's weddings who was a roommate of mine. So I, you literally carry these people <laughs> for the rest of your life. So yeah, we did get along really well awesome question i love hearing about the roommate stories um so yeah great question one thing i also sold me on piece were the dorm room sizes i went to another school that will remain nameless that was also a small school in a nice size city um and the the size of the room was not i said no i can't do this it immediately crossed it off my list i was like absolutely not so <laughs> room sold it for me so that was part of what so, that may have led you to WP was the yeah. room size. Got that was another thing on my list. Yeah. <laughs> and something worth mentioning, I think, also is that uh, it, I, up until this point, um, we've been able to accommodate most of the students that want a single room. Uh, so I understand that you don't want to have a roommate because of COVID. So I, I, I do know they're trying their, their hardest to accommodate those to get a room on their own. Obviously, it's not it's not possible uh, the a hundred percent of the time, but uh, the majority of the time it is possible because again we're a smaller school we're a good community we're trying to be safe, um, so just throwing that out there. No, that that's a really good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they have been um, res residence life have been very accommodating for students um, during this time. Um, it is could be a little bit. So shout out and kudos to our residence life for just um, just being accommodating for students, especially if they want to be by themselves. That's totally understandable. I would probably want to be by myself in the middle of a pandemic, but um, they've been very much so accommodating for students. Mm -hmm. Other questions? These are great questions. So yeah, they are. Maya, if I can ask you a question, mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your internship experience? Yeah. Uh, I know that's something that pieces it's all about. So if you can tell us. About it's really funny. And I can admittedly say this now uh, is that that wasn't one of the things on my list. It didn't, I, as an 18 year old woman, it didn't, uh, I didn't matter to me. I was like, okay, everyone's required to take an internship, whatever. But I had no idea how important it was um, because hindsight is always 2020. But I went into that internship class and was like, I have to be here, here we are. And I wanted to combine both of my loves. I wanted to combine theater, um, I'm a theater nerd through and through and communication. And so North Carolina theater is literally down the street. Like if you keep walking straight, you run right into us. <laughs> and I said, okay, sure, I'll apply for this internship so that I can get through this class. And the people I met there, the things that I learned were incredible. I was able to work on Grease, the show that they were doing. And our main character, the guy who was playing Danny, was um, a Raleigh native, had made it to Broadway, but also his episode of American Idol was airing the same week of our show. And so I learned how important it was to uh, twist things and like, I mean, the way that we wrote our articles, we pushed people who are watching American Idol to come see our show. It was, it was so cool. It was interesting to me. And so um, one thing I learned through that internship class was how important connections were. 
And so I think that is one of the things that um, I said earlier, where I kept those connections for those next five years. And I still, you know, helped them out when I when they needed me and um, even reached out to them to see how my class could help them out in the midst of a pandemic uh, last semester. And so it was really a, I don't even know how to describe it. It's still kind of surreal to me the, when I received the phone call from the CEO of North Carolina Theater um, to offer me a job that I had not applied for or interviewed for. And so very, very cool. Um, so the internship class is typically taken your senior, it was my first semester of senior year. So it just depends on how you plan yeah. out your classes. And I recommend um, doing multiple internships if that is feasible for you. Uh, because obviously everyone's required to take a class that coincides with an internship, but connections are important and reach out to as many people as you know and gain those connections during your time at Peace. Especially, I think it's really cool because I was still in a class with 15 people but like I said, I had the city at my fingertips. So I was able to go down the street and intern at the largest regional theater, you know, in the state and now be employed for them. So there's so many opportunities outside the doors of peace. One of my favorite things that I um, learned not too long ago was um, we were talking to the political science, um, the head of the department. Mm -hmm. And um, She's, oh, it was, sorry, it was supposed to- professor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't is she, is she, is she, we, she was supposed to uh, kind of uh, give us a kind of a picture of what the programs were, but instead of doing that, what she did is she just started bragging about her students. And for the next hour, she just goes and tells story after story after story of the incredible things of that each student is doing. You know, uh, obviously, this is political science, uh, this is forensic or um, um, policy, well, anyway, but like people working at the FBI, SDI. Mm -hmm. Uh, people working in the capital in North Carolina, like there's so many different things on, on how she was able to touch people's lives and now how incredible they're doing. Yeah. And and th that's what I keep hearing from alumni everywhere. It's like, wow, like my connections to my professors led to what my future is going to be. And that's so important, especially, especially because we are small and, and they get to know you, as you said earlier. Uh, I think uh, th that's probably my favorite thing about peace right now. It's uh, how well connected these um students leave after they're done. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I can piggyback off that. I love hearing about, um, especially when we spoke with that department head, um, about their experiences here and then their experiences once they leave Peace. So it kind of like all works together. Like they start here and then they yeah. keep going and they're like sailing um, over the mountaintop once they leave here. So I think um, Peace is a great foundation for them to start their career. So um, I just love hearing those stories. And I think we have a... Yeah, um, so there is a, um, Abby, there's a musical theater major, just, just added um, a theater administration, which, I mean, I think that's, it's so cool to see your alma mater doing crazy things. You're like, I want to just go back to do that again. Um, so there um, is a just a straight theater major as well. So there is a great theater department. Uh, I was involved in that as well during my time at Peace. But I think one of the cool things too, and I keep attributing back to this is um, our theater department partners with local theaters. There's Raleigh Little Theater, there's North Carolina Theater, there um, is theater in the park. Like there are so many theaters in the surrounding areas that want to partner with, um, William Peace University. So I think that is really cool too, to get more connections. And um, I've been to several of the productions here and they are just great. And the fact that I see the students that are just walking around on campus and they get on stage and they come alive in there. Um, so theater is, pre is pretty much one of our, one of our little popular majors. Um, so yeah, we yeah. constantly blown away. I was <laughs> I was not that talented when I went to Peace, so I'm constantly blown away for sure. And there are two actual theaters on campus, right? Yeah, so we have um, in our main building, there is a black box style theater, which is my favorite. Um, and that's called Leggett Theater. And then we have our auditorium, which is Keenan Auditorium for our bigger shows. Okay, so what are some of our other popular majors? Uh, great question. Um, some of our other popular majors are our biology program. Um, those of you who want to enter into kind of like the medical fields, um, business administration, of course. Um, our psychology program is very um, popular, um, as well as our um, 
exercise and sports science um, for those who want to um, kind of go into physical therapy of some sorts. And then our theater program as well is one some of the top programs here. And we have a very, very special one that we love. Um, it's kind of our little special baby is our simulation and game design program. Um, everybody's laughing because yes, that is like something that students love. They flock to us because of our game design program. Um, so many of our students who graduate within that program are doing great things. Um, and I think that is a very good major to look at now because we went virtual for a year. So um, everyone in technology um, field is doing pretty well right now. So those are some of our popular majors. Yeah, I'm laughing because that was one of the hardest classes I've ever taken <laughs> in that department. Uh, yeah, that was hard, but I mean, it's a great department. A lot of my friends majored in that when I was there and they are crazy talented now, so. <laughs> what major was your roommate? What, what, what was your roommate's major? My, um, I'll talk about the two of my best friends who I lived with most of my time at Peace. One was a comm major like me. So we had a lot of classes together. So we lived together and had a lot of classes together and she still put me in her wedding. So that was nice of her. Um, and my other um, really best friend, she was a business major. So one of them, the one that was a comm major now works, um, she does wholesale selling um, for Roses. I don't know if you guys know the store Roses, but that's really cool. Mm. Uh, and then another of my friend works out in RTP, who was a business major. Yes. Um, what type of scholarships do we offer? That's a great question. So we offer merit scholarships. Um, it's based um, from 4000 to 16000 um, That is given to you once you are accepted to the university. Um, and we also accept outside scholarships as well. Um, so you do have to um, complete applications or maybe essays for those outside scholarship. It just depends on what the requirements are to apply for them. But we definitely do offer um, merit scholarships for students. Other questions? Great. So we're going to. Um, uh oh, I think somebody may have. Interested. There's one more question. One more question. Um, yeah. Is there is there student parking or is it just city parking? Um, it is student parking. We do have um, a lot of parking areas for students to park here on campus. And you don't have to walk forever to park. <laughs> no. So that's nice. The, uh, and this may, I may be a little biased about this, but the nice part of parking and also at peace is that you can walk to a lot of restaurants. Yes. So you don't have to look for parking downtown. You just leave your car at peace and you just, you just go walk everywhere. So um, it's actually a pretty good location for parking in general. Yes, um, so before we um, kind of wrap this up a little bit, we're going to talk about more upcoming events. We have lots and lots of more virtual events coming up for you. So I'm just going to tell you about a few of them. Um, we have an uh, instant decision day that starts tomorrow and um, the 11th through the 18th. So that is for students who have not applied to us yet or whether you've already started your application but it's not yet completed. Um, you sign up to meet with one of us counselors and we can give you an instant decision um, that day. So that is a great opportunity for you to go ahead and just also speak with us about more questions that you may have and we can give you an admissions decision in person. Um, second is our peace preview with the ambassador takeover. So that is where um, we'll have students, our, our missions ambassadors kind of take you around campus. Um, and that is on a Saturday morning, that's February 20th. So they just kind of show, show your residence hall. So that is actually a good one to sign up for. You'll get to see what campus looks like. Um, and part two of our first gen webinar series is Finances 101. And that one is March 2nd um, at 5 p.m. So we'll go ahead and put our information in, 
in the um, slides as well, as well as in the chat, if you have any questions for us. Um, so yeah, those are just some, some of the upcoming events that we hey, have. In Ansley? Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a question. How do we sign up, sign up for Instant Decision Day? Okay, yeah, so what you can do is you can reach out to one of us when we'll sign you up for that and we'll give you the information to sign up for a time slot. Um, can you put our information? I'm trying to yes. Mm -hmm. so, our information, you can definitely email us back here. We have a tour on the 15th. What will we cover on that tour? Well, when we tell you what happens on the tour, you won't be excited about it. Um, is it in person or is it virtual? Because it'll be with the student. It's in person. Awesome. So that's even better. You'll be able to um, just kind of see, walk around campus, definitely see the buildings, definitely have a kind of a one-on-one -on -one with a, with one of our admissions ambassadors. They definitely take you on your tour. Um, and then you'll be able, if you want to speak with one of us afterwards, you can, um, but that is definitely the time to ask um, our ambassadors all the questions that you need to ask because they're currently here um, and they currently know everything that's going on. They're living it now in real time. So that is a great time to just come with all your questions for ambassadors. So thank you so much. Are there any other questions for us? Thank you so much for coming to our first part. Um, please reach out to us um, at our emails if you want to sign up for any of the other sessions um, that we that we have coming up. Um, please keep a lookout for your email for a calendar of events. We have a lot of events coming up for the next couple of months um, with so much more information for you. So thank you so much.